raised uh, nearly a million. So this is a cyber deck because uh, it's more like an all-in-one computer more, isn't it? Okay, should we turn it on? Yeah, but I want to. Okay, go ahead. Don't need to break the uh, Wait, you do that too? Uh, probably something like that. Okay, so here we are. Here we are. This is the definition of a DIY computer. Yep, yep, look at that, we got our first, first success. It has a custom wooden case, common components, and it's made to be actually used. Primarily to do programming, tinker with ESP32s, experiment with databases, and do typical computing tasks. Secret Life of Machines. Yeah. It has a couple of fun add ons, like an integrated software defined radio, a Raspberry Pi high quality camera with a movable mount, as well as a small screen that's always on and shows the stats of the computer. The goal of this build was to make a primary working computer, something that you would actually be using every day. And that also has a unique look and utilized reasonably priced parts. So let's go into it. So we've got the Pi with the NVMe. This is a powered USB hub, 12 volt, 5 amp power supply that we're gonna divvy off into this five volt, six amp, power supply for the Pi itself. Then the other components that are gonna be connected is the ESP32. We have the camera over here, a small amplifier with these two mini speakers, OLED here that's connected to the ESP32 for prototyping. Software defined radio. Yes, actually we have two things. We have, basically if you have a radio, you have to have speakers. production into the US. So this is working pretty well with the amplifier and the two little mini speakers that are going to fit underneath the keyboard rests. So the first thing I like to do when I test a new idea is to build a version of it in cardboard usually, eighth inch bolted birch. Okay. So this is just an AC power cord coming in here. Going into the brick which is inside. Yeah. The AC DC power supply. Which is pretty cool because you don't have to bring a brick with you. That's you just need to bring it and the cord with you. And this is a standard cord. As soon as you plug the, the AC power into the power supply through to the wall, that gets energized and everything else is stopped until you activate the switch. Once the switch is activated, the red light will come on and then the black line is now positive and it's gonna energize the board here. And this board is where you're gonna divvy up your power after that. Okay, so now the dangerous thing is to make sure that nothing is touching where it shouldn't be touching. Good. We have an expansion port here. Uh, this is for the, uh, the second HDMI. And then on this side, we have an expansion for the USB. Ports. And this is the power light. Power switch, yeah, power light. The power switch and... The main power. Yeah. The green light comes on, the power supply, that's good. Now, if we hit the switch, do we see a red light? We got a red light. So now we're powering that from 12 volts with the 8,000 ohm resistor. So now each one of these can deliver 12 volts. Okay, let's try to assemble the whole power supply now. Oh, we're spinning. You have to make it spin. Okay. Shut off. Blast off! Now our previous program, which was this uh, writer program, also basically exists here. Because that program is running in Python, and this is a Linux computer. We actually made a video about a different version of these which can only do writing. Yeah. This, it uh, looks extremely similar except in some ways not as big. Yeah, the only difference is that it, this is two inches deeper. And actually, so over here it didn't have deeper. a brick inside. 
No. It was just a Type C yeah. USB cord. The reason it's bigger though is because it has the extra power stuff. Okay, the way this is designed is that the 12 volts comes in and gets distributed through this little board here. Okay, so the idea is that this, this one could be unplugged, the top hub could be unplugged and removed, which would give you access to the bottom there. Okay, because normally this comes with this, this little shield that goes on top of that, but these, these things made it really difficult to see the screws. This is trapped in here really well, so that's not going anywhere. It's got a brace in the front here, as well as it's being pushed against the side of the case. And then we do have a screen here. And that is powered by an ESP32. It's monitoring the case uh, temperature inside. And then the fan speed is being controlled by it. Yeah. So if it gets super hot, the fan goes faster. This is proof of a touchscreen. Proof, that's right. So you don't need a uh, mouse if you don't really want it. We designed it to be kind of like an old looking kind of design. So basically it is, yeah. see the angles? That's, that's unusual. You like those speaker holes? Let's see if we can get it to pick up any stations. So you can play it. Okay, turn the uh, volume on. Well, it's not picking it up very well. So uh, let's get it to read. There we go. You get this 
rule dropped where Cal Raleigh beat Brent Rooker by a half a foot. We're actually to getting to something. Yeah. Because they were tied with 17 home runs. Why did they just go to a okay. swing off there? Okay, so that is, we got the screen, we got the keyboard. As soon as we hit AC power, we should see the ESP32 turn on, because that's running right through. Yep, yep, look at that, we got our first, first success. Cyberdeck. Now we're gonna test, turn on the uh, computer. What we got, oh, we got no signal, that's perfect. Yep, we see fuzz, it's connected. Where's fuzz? This, all this nonsense. We also put on top of here, the camera. So stop that. Now we're going to test the camera part. Here we go. <laughs> it works. It works. Hit save image. And that's the picture. It's a secret. Save. And this is the high quality Raspberry Pi camera, which we made a case for it. And inside here we have a breakout for an HDMI, so we could connect this by... Yeah, this cable is yeah. what connects the camera. We made a little slide here so this can slide in. This and is be glued held here. on. Yeah, that part is glued on. And then this connection is, an, is a short HDMI cable. Yeah. So that you can just remove it if you wanted to, and then you could have this completely separate or on the table or somewhere else. This is the part that's glued on. Like maybe you don't want it to just be up here. Yeah, exactly. When if you're you taking a photo. Move around. Or if you're doing some kind of experiment or something, you need to move it around. Or if you need to use a longer HDMI, you can have a, a cable that's super long. Yeah, any HDMI. Normally, the camera is fixed right in the center of the laptop or something. I guess um, some people might want to put in a different type of computer than a Raspberry Pi 5. They might want to use a, uh, a mini uh, Windows type computer, but it will end up taking up more room in here to do that. Yeah. So, but you can, you can figure it out. I mean, but it would be different. This was uh, convenient because Raspberry Pi 5 is a relatively small computer and we're able to mount it right behind here on the back of the screen. In terms of the software, this is just running the Raspberry Pi OS. We just 
put the software defined radio in it and otherwise it just has you know programming files and things like that Yeah, no, and I, you know, I've got a, I've got a nationwide platform. And but ESP32 mm -hmm. is what's controlling the fan and this. Yeah. This has nothing to do with it. That's correct. But ESP32 and the screen is on always. Yes. So, in other words, the the switching power does not interfere with the ESP32. As soon as you plug it in, that gets power. Yeah. But you have to reset it either through your phone. It runs on a special Wi-Fi. Yeah. Or you can even set it through turning this computer on, which is turned on by the power switch. Okay. So we could plug in a big monitor over here, or a TV. You could take this into, the, into oh, yeah. a TV and use it as a monitor. We've used other monitors with this before. Yeah, which works well. Yeah. So especially if you're playing like... Uh, the Minecraft stuff. Yeah. Like if you want to see a big screen. So it's kind of get the best of both worlds. You got a small touch screen, but you can also have a large external screen. Yeah. The other cool thing about this is that you don't need the mouse. Yeah, the touchscreen. And the touchscreen works very well. The only accommodation we had to make for this touchscreen is down here. We had to cut out a little bit for yeah, the because screen. Yeah, because there's a ribbon for the regular screen that we've dealt with before. Yeah. But there was a different ribbon for the touch part, yeah. which we haven't dealt before, with before. And it came out too far. Yes, but otherwise it's all put together the same as the Cyber Rider one was. Yeah. Yeah, except for this little, this little part here. This is how you shut it down. Shut down. And now, just hit the switch to off. Okay, you got it. Okay. Pretty cool.